Yay, 504 subscribers. Um, I'm not really sure what to do to say thanks. I know for like my 70 subscribers and for 200 subscribers I made games, but I've been feeling so uncreative lately, and I've had so much school and work that I can't really think of anything to do. Um, but sometime in the future I will think of some way to show you guys my appreciation. I just feel like if I kind of force myself to do something with no good ideas, it'll come out kind of crappy and not worth it for me or for you guys, so uh, I'll think of something eventually. I updated my website again. It's a little bit more clean this time. I have a really hard time trying to figure out website themes that I like. But I have this now. It's still in con under construction. These just link to the games page, except for this one. I have a Pick an Online Sticks page up, which is the main thing I've been working on lately. Um, I'll post more as more is developed. And for now, all I have is a basic description. And then I have a link to the YouTube playlist for Pick an Online Sticks. And on the very bottom is a link to download both the exe files for the server and client and the source code I have so far. Though there's not really much to see right now, it's not really a game, I just have some basic SDLnet uh, functions for the server and client to connect, and really basic multi-threading right now. Uh, the client right now just sends data to the server and doesn't really do much else. Um, so that's all I have for picking all my six now. Another thing that's new on my webpage is that I've started writing a how to write a map editor tutorial. I haven't recorded a video for that yet, but I will soon. Uh, right now, all that I've written on there is some basic theory on what you need, how they work, and I'll add on to that later with time. I'm trying to develop the website before I do the video, and when I have more time, when I have less tests and less compilers to write for school and stuff, I'll get that up to date. So yes, this doesn't do much right now, I just have my server listen and then I can run the game... maybe? Alright. And then it connects. You don't actually move your character around right now, you just pan the screen. And this is what the server looks like. It's getting info about the player. It's not very good info, but it is info nonetheless, and it is being sent over the network. So, yep. This is what I'm gonna work on tonight. I am going to try to make it seem more like an online game. Though, one bad note is, I will not be able to be the server, because the router isn't my router. It is my dad's router. And uh, I can't do any port forwarding. But I know some people with servers, so it's not a problem. It'll just be very closed beta, I guess, for a while. Okay, so something I should figure out before I actually start coding is what sort of commands the client and server are going to send each other. So, you know, when the player starts moving, it's going to send player is moving, and then it'll send player stopped once the player stops. Uh, it would be very inefficient if you said player moves, player moves, player moves, player moves, but we'll do player start, player stop, and then every so often we'll check the coordinates of what the player is supposed to be, and um, correct it on the client side if it, it's off at all. Um, you might have something sort of like maybe slash or at, yes I'm using a sharpie on my whiteboard, I'm hardcore, to denote something like, you know, a command, maybe when we send the server a message we might say something like, uh, there well, you know, you'd have some sort of ID. Uh, start. And then direction of some sort, like left. Or you want maybe the client or the server to have kick abilities and stuff like that. So I'll be working on trying to figure out what sort of different commands that will be going between each. So the way the client and the server work together, the way I think anyway, is like this. The server machine is on and running at all times and listening for new connections and handling the players that are already connected. Um, the client logs in and that login request is sent to the server. 
The server checks it against the information it has in the database and either sends or rejects the client. Um, if it accepts, it will send the client basically its coordinates and any other saved data that it needs to start running. From there, the client will update other players' coordinates in the chat box whenever the server sends it update messages. But otherwise, the client program will wait for the user to move or type a message. Once this happens, the client will update itself and then send the server the information to get it verified. If the server rejects the information, the client will be thrown back to where it was before the illegal action. This is what you see when there's lag, when you're moving and then you're suddenly put back where you were. Um, of course, on the client side, it will also check for collision before it tries to move the player there. But you also want to protect against people trying to send phony data to try to get to some place they're not supposed to go. This is because it's easier to update the client and then get the okay from the server, and then face the risk of being rejected, um, than waiting on the server to say okay and then updating. Anyway. If the action is legal, then the server will update its information on the user, and then also send updates to all nearby players so they can see the player. This process is repeated, and that's basically how the client and server work.